Hi, Scott Shepard, Lake Area Technical Institute. I teach photo media there, and uh, this is a tutorial that will show you a little bit of, in give you a little bit of insight into how you can um, make it a little bit harder for people to steal your photos from Flickr. Uh, Flickr is a wonderful website. There are 87 million uh, members. There are, according to my quick research, about 8 billion pictures uh, that make up Flickr. Um, and I just wanted to show you that by default, Flickr makes it pretty easy for pictures to be shared. And I would put that in quotes, although I don't know how often people come to steal photos so they can make money from them. But um, whatever the case, it is easy to download a photo from a Flickr member. And I'm going to show you this um, using a, a cool photo that uh, one of our students, uh, James, posted. James, I hope it's okay that I'm doing this. It's a nice picture of the Yankton Bridge. Um, and even though I've encouraged my students and demonstrated how they can set up copyright on photos, I'm going to show you that um, if I click on download all sizes, I will see that James has applied a all rights reserved copyright to his photo, but still in blue, which means that it's downloadable, uh, is this link, download the large 1024 size of this photo. Now that's not particularly large, but um, I've also, um, by modeling this, encourage people, I think, to upload uh, high-resolution photos uh, because this is a pretty good backup um, for our photography. And you'll notice that if I click on the original, which is a huge photo, I get James's huge photo. And, oh, and, and it's as easy as this to download. Just right-click on it, go Save Image to Downloads, and you didn't see it but that photo is now on my on my computer uh, and with a photo like that I could make prints uh, and so on all I have to do is change the name um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the copyright settings and if you go up to the upper right hand um, menu which would be your emotic or your uh, your icon your personal icon or the generic one that they give you and you go to settings You have a variety of real um, fine-grained settings that you can apply to your account. In particular, we're going to go to privacy and permissions. And I've already gone in and changed um, some of the settings on my account. And I'm just going to show you the ones that you need to change. Um, who can access your original image files? I have it set to only me. The largest shared image size, which is 1024. Now, to change any of these, you just click on Edit and it will tell you um, what the various sizes and options are. By default, it's set to best display size, uh, which I think is 2048, which is a fairly high resolution photo. It's not as big as that one that James, uh, that I downloaded from James to my computer, but um, it's a pretty large photo. I've got mine set to 1024. Uh, I'll allow others to share your stuff. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, they're going to be sharing uh, low resolution images um, and some other things here. You'll notice, by the way, one of the settings that you have is who can print your photos. I've got it set to only me. And I'm not, I'm not sure if by default uh, it's set there or if you have to go in and set it. Um, hide your access data. If you really wanted to hide all of the camera data that's part of a picture, uh, you could do that. You could also um, hide, let's see, somewhere in here. Um, you can also hide whether or not your um, picture shows up on a map. And that's right here. Uh, who will be able to see your stuff on a map? I don't have a problem with that. Uh, that people, I, I geotag almost all of my photos, and I don't care that they can see them. But there might be a reason you don't want someone to see uh, geolocation information in a photo. Maybe it's your perfect secret photographic location and you don't want to share that spot with the world. Anyway, this is um, the place where you're going to change the settings. Now, I just want to show you something. Let's go back to um, my photo stream. And in particular, 
I'm going to go to a photo that I posted um, that is a triptych of uh, coral. If I click on that, you notice that the size that it displays at is a fairly small size. Now if I go up here to the three circles, I'm sure there's a little name, a name for that, and I go to um, download all sizes, you'll notice that um, the black one is large to 1024. That's the one that I set that would um, tell Flickr how I want the biggest size I want my images to display on someone else's account. You'll notice that if I click on original, the full resolution version of this photo shows up. That's in my account. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back a step here, is I'm going to log out of my account and sign into uh, my alter ego, um, just so you can see what someone who is following me on their Flickr account sees when they come to this same picture. Remember this detail right there. Okay, I know that this is a little bit confusing, but you're now looking at uh, an account called um, Shepherd LATI, and uh, I am following Scott Shepherd. Um, and so I'm seeing the photos that he's posted that I am able to see. And I think that I have friends and family status with him. So I will see um, all of the pictures that he posts other than the ones that he posts privately. So if I click on this, and just so you understand something, um, this is not the first account that we started this um, screencast with. Notice that it says that I'm following Scott Shepard. And in particular, we're going to go looking for uh, that set and that picture. Now the display here looks pretty much the same as it did on mine. This is 10,024 pixels wide, but as a follower of, um, Scott, uh, of Scott Shepard LATI, if I click on the three circles and go to download all sizes, you'll notice that the largest photo that shows up here is large 10,024. You'll also notice up here that it says that all rights are reserved and that the owner has disabled downloading of their photos. If I do a right click on that, and oh, let's just say that I try what shows up here in the contextual menu, download original Flickr image. I get a dialogue that says, no, you can't do that. Now, of course, being a savvy computer user, I know that Command Shift 4 on a Mac gives me the selection tool. So I can do a screen capture of this picture. And now that screen capture is on my computer, but it's a low resolution image it's not one that um, someone could do a lot with. Now, I'm going to go back to my original account here. Okay, I'm back in my account, and I just wanted to uh, review this one more time with you. Uh, go to Settings, Privacy and Permissions, and the important ones uh, for this particular uh, purpose uh, of, of the things that I showed you in this um, screencast is that only you can access your original files. The larger shared image size is 1024. And the other thing that's important here is that what license will your content have all rights reserved. Now, I haven't, I didn't show you this the first time. This is something you can do photo by photo or um, apply to groups as you import them. But I just wanted you to show to <laughs> you to see that if you click edit here, uh, by default, um, by the way, I think attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, uh, Creative Commons license is applied. And I don't have a problem with that license for a lot of my photos. But if I click None, All Rights Reserved, that becomes the default license that apl is applied automatically to every photo that you import into Flickr. Anyway, I think that that's an important part of the process of sharing photos is trying to protect them. And in the electronic era, it's, a, it's impossible to protect um, everything that we post, but this will make it harder for them to get the really big, good pictures that you put out here. Thanks for listening.